हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल ओशन टेक इनफो सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू जावास्क्रिप्ट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड इंट्रोडक्शन टू जावास्क्रिप्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज जावास्क्रिप्ट एग्जैक्टली सो जावास्क्रिप्ट इज अ स्क्रिप्टिंग लैंग्वेज और अ प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज दैट एड्स इंटरेक्टिविटी टू योर वेबसाइट and always use with the html document for providing the dynamic interactivity on your website or mobile apps for example it is used to develop the gaming application it is used to provide the responses when the buttons are pressed or data is entered in a form or it is also used to provide the dynamic styling on the web pages it is also used to provide the 2d and 3d animations on the web pages so these are the examples if you use javascript you can achieve these things who was invented javascript basically so javascript invented by brendan eich co founder of mozilla corporation in may 1995 is javascript interpreted or compiled so remember it is always interpreted by the web browser line by line means each line of javascript code is going to be interpreted by a web browser which is line by line it will be executing so it is never gets compiled by browser now we need to understand where to use javascript so i i will be giving you a brief about 14 use cases where you where the javascript can be used so first is client side form validation let's say when you get the login form or registration form so the validation has to be occur at the client side then after submitting your data via form then it has to be validated at the backend side or as well so for the client side validation javascript is going to be used drop down menus let's take an example you have a two drop down one is a country another is a city when you select any country corresponding to that country you have a list of cities so that should be filled up into the drop down so this can also be achieved with the help of javascript it is used to display the data and time also it is also used to read and display the json data via ajax call let's say if you are if if you want to get the uh, information of a user when you do the login okay in the form of json so when you make a request so you do a network request and get the data and get the data in the json format and javascript can read that json format data and display on the web browser or a web page it is also used to display the clocks it is also used to display the pop up window and dialog boxes for example when when you have a shopping cart site when you added some item into the cart uh when you want to delete some item from the shopping bag so when you click on it so it should ask from the user do you really want to delete this item can you please confirm so that message has to be come on a pop up window and that pop up window can also be achieved with the help of javascript handling events like mouse events click double click keyboard events key press enter uh, arrow up arrow down key touch even when you swipe something on your mobile browser even dom which is a document object model bom browser object model events are there that javascript uh, provides those apis to handle those events it is also used to create the carousel and sliders which you have seen Uh, on many websites it is also used to change the dom and css elements and their values also it also set and get the cookies ask the question to the visitor and show messages 
it is also used to remember the data on the client side so when you want to save the user information on the browser so that you can achieve with the help of local stories or session stories it is also used to detect the devices and the browser for for the backend server from where the request came up nowadays it is also going to be used in the automated testing framework as well as developing the hybrid mobile applications like if you develop a mobile application you can use the react native and there are uh, other framework as well to develop the uh, hybrid mobile application which reduces your cost it is also used to develop the gaming apps so these are the 14 use cases i have discussed with you so far now everyone discuss about where the javascript can be used and what can it do but i'm also discussing about what javascript can't do in the browsers so javascript ab abilities in the browser are limited for the sake of users safety the aim is to prevent will web page from accessing private information or harming the user's data for example it uh, it is having some limitation or the restriction first it cannot read and write the files so javascript on a web page may not read and write arbitrary files on the hard disk or copy them or execute the program it has no direct access to the operating system functions modern browser allow it to work with files but the access is limited and only provided if the user does certain actions like dropping a file into a browser window or selecting it via input tag so this thing can be done with the help of your html input tag but nothing else you can't do with the help of javascript it cannot enable the camera or microphone automatically there are ways to interact with the camera and microphone and other devices but they require a user's explicit permission so a javascript enabled page may not sneakily enable a web camera observe the surroundings and send the information to someone and third reason is uh, or the limitation is different apps or windows generally do not know about each other sometimes they do for example when one window uses javascript to open the other one but even in this case javascript from one page may not access the another one if they try to come from different sites okay so that is required or called as a same origin policy then only it will work otherwise it won't because this limitation is good for the user safety point of view let's say you have a page which is coming from SDP from xyz.com site which a user has opened must not be able to access the another browser tab with the url sdp gmail.com and steal the information from there so it shouldn't happen uh, it cannot access others domain data directly javascript can easily communicate over the uh, over the uh, net to the server where the current page came from but its ability to receive data from other site and domains is crippled though possible it requires explicit agreement on your SATP headers from the remote side and once again that also provides a safety limitation so let's say you have this uh, 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 you know the site is trying to access this gmail so you have a agreement with gmail and and then only the client can access and can perform uh, to get the information related from your uh, gmail site okay otherwise it can't do anything so javascript can't do uh, itself uh, so there are workarounds to achieve such thing get the permissions and then only you can achieve that now what makes javascript unique now First of all, it provides you a full integration with HTML and CSS, supports by all the major and modern browsers and enabled by default. Nowadays, JavaScript allows to create a server-side web application, mobile application, IoT-based application and many more things it can do now.
Now, this is a very interesting question. Uh, what is the difference between ECMAScript and JavaScript? So, remember one thing. ECMAScript is a scripting language specification standardized by ECMA International. So, what is ECMA International and what is ECMA 262? I will discuss about it later. And JavaScript is basically the implementation of ECMAScript standard. So, let me first cover what is ECMA International. So, it's a st ECMA stands for European Computer Manufacturers Association. It's a standard organization for information and communication systems. The organization was founded in 1961 to standardize computer systems in Europe. ECMA International, European Association for Standardizing Information and Communication Systems. Membership is always open to large and small companies worldwide that produce market or develop computer or communication system and have interest and experience in the areas addressed by groups technical bodies and it is located in the geneva what is acma 262 so acma 262 is the 11th edition released in june 2020 is the standard that defines the acma step 2020 general purpose programming language specification so this is the link I have provided. You can go through it. What are the specifications are mentioned into this uh, ECMAScript 262 11th edition doc. So, so and with the help of those specification, you can implement those specification with the help of JavaScript programming language. So JavaScript is the implementation of ECMAScript standard. So this is the main difference between the ECMAScript versus JavaScript. Now, next, I'm going to discuss about the ECMAScript uh, versions when it was released. Uh, so, let's discuss about it. ES1, it was released in 1997, ES2, 1998, ES3 was released in 1999, ES4 was completely dropped, it, was, it wasn't released. Uh, ES5 was released in 2009, ES6 as you know that in 2015, then ES7 came up in 2016, ES8 in 2017, ES9 in 2018, ES10 in 2019 and recently ES11 came up in 2020. ES next which is uh, uh, which maybe some other features can come up in the uh, future so that we are waiting. now. How do you add JavaScript to your web page? So basically, browser doesn't know about JavaScript. We need to let the browser know in advance that we want to use JavaScript in our HTML page. How you can make sure the browser know about the JavaScript is there or not? With the help of script tag. So we use the script tag in the HTML pages to place JavaScript code. So browser interpret this line only, uh, this is script tag. Uh, to execute your javascript code and there are the three places you can include the javascript code in your html page between the body tag of the html between the head tag of the html and an external javascript file with the help of .js extension so i'm going to discuss all three use cases with code so between the body tag so this is your html5 document this is your head tag this is your body tag Keep your script tag at the end of your closed body tag. So this is a script type text slash JavaScript. If you don't mention, so modern browser easily uh, uh, knows about it. If you are using the script, so that means the JavaScript is going to be used. So alert, what is that? So I will talk about it later. So that uh, so that when when I will do the programming in front of you. So you can get to know about uh, many more functions like alert, prompt. So this uh, JavaScript code you can place uh, in between the body tag, but please keep at the bottom of your closed body tag. Next is uh, between the head tag. So this is between the head tag. I have put the JavaScript code, and this is uh, external in the external JS file. So when I wrote my code. Uh, uh, into the external JS file, then I have to embed into my HTML code. So how we can do that? So create a separate print.js file or xyz.js file. You can create it. Uh, let's say here is the function print name and document.write. 
so on the HTML document, I want to write something this message like "Welcome Ashwin in JavaScript world." So how I can use this external JavaScript file in my HTML? So this separate HTML I have created, print.html, uh, and this is my HTML5 document. Uh, either in the head tag or in the body, I can put it. But here I call that uh, print.js this external uh, JS file. But when I I can call this uh, print name method. So there, this is the event. This is called the uh, you know the uh, browser event, on load event, and this this is a print name. When the page gets load, this method will call uh, because this script has already added. Uh, so it will it will print on my HTML document of the browser. Uh, uh, welcome Ashwini in JavaScript world. So these are the three ways you can use your JavaScript code. Now. What is the benefit of using external JS file? First of all, it provides the reusability because single JS file can be used in several HTML pages. Always saved with .js ex extension. Segregate HTML and JavaScript logic makes HTML and JavaScript easier to read and maintain. So these are the main benefits of using ex external JS file. Which who do you need to execute JavaScript code? Just a web browser only. A notepad, any ID where you can write your JavaScript code and just a browser to execute that JavaScript code. Nothing else. Because every browser contains a JavaScript engine. For example, Firefox contains a SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine, Chrome having a V8 engine, Microsoft Edge having Chakra engine, a Safari has a Nitro engine. So these are the JavaScript engine embedded into your uh, browser to execute your JavaScript. What are the best practices we have to follow in uh, while writing the JS code? So highly recommended that all JS files should keep uh, separately and after that combined all the JS file into a single file and this can be achieved with the help of Gulp, Webpack, Rollup, Parcel2. If you want the uh, video on the Gulp, Webpack, Rollup and Parcel uh, build tool. So uh, please provide in the comment. I will definitely create a separate video on each and every tools uh, to, to tell about what exactly they can do in detail. So waiting for your comments as well. So it increases the web performance of your web page as well as improves the response time. So this is the final summary. What you have learned so far, you have learned what is JavaScript, who invented JavaScript, is JavaScript interpreted or compiled, where to use JavaScript, what JavaScript can do in browsers, what makes JavaScript unique now, ECMAScript versus JavaScript, ECMAScript versions, how do you add JavaScript to your web page, benefits of using external JS file, which tool do you need to execute JavaScript code? And few best practices in JS code, but yeah, there are many more best practices come up in next coming videos. So thank you so much for watching Ocean Tech Info channel. If you really want a complete and good knowledge on JavaScript, so please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get the notification of latest videos.